Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible, and we are going to have as our text Isaiah chapter 11. But before we do that, I want to read, oh, let's go to Revelation chapter 13. Oh, I guess we're going to read the whole chapter. Well, well, the first from the first part, part. Now we've covered this a little bit, but I want to make a point. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and 10 horns and upon his horns 10 crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. See, this beast is going to have a mouth like a lion. He's going to try to talk like the lion of the tribe of Judah. But, you know. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his, thou his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. I did a Bible study on that. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's about three and a half years. The way I see it, and I could be wrong, the uh, what they call the, the seven years tribulation period is the first three and a half years is the time of sorrows. And then the last three and a half years is the time of Jacob's trouble. After the two witnesses confront the beast and are killed and are raised up into heaven, that last three and a half years is going to be hell on earth. When it happens, believers that stand strong for Jesus, that won't compromise, that are willing to lose their lives for their faith in Christ, for them, it's going to literally be hell on earth. Trust me, people right now, they don't really want Christ to come back. I mean, you know, well, you know, I got my career and, and my, my bass boat and my nice pickup truck. And, you know, I'm having fun with the wife. We get to go out dancing on Friday night. And, you know, and I'm not talking necessarily about me, but just in general, you know, people aren't really, they don't really want Christ to come back now. But I'll tell you what. When the two witnesses are killed, I believe, if my timeline's correct, that's when the man of sin is going to go into probably a rebuilt temple and proclaim that he is God. And that's when all hell breaks loose on earth. Read Matthew 24. When that happens, when the man of sin sits down in the temple, that's time for Christians to flee to the wilderness. Boom, gone. All right, so, verse 6. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Now, they, they want you to think that uh, your average demon nominational church wants you to think that this is talking about the Antichrist is going to make war with the saints, making you think that the saints are the Antichrist, plural. And they want you to think the, the Antichrist is going to make war with the Antichrist, plural. Eh, I don't think so. I think they're talking about Christians here, but that's just my opinion. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him 
whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Do you know that Christ was, was uh, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world? I mean, from the time that God uh, the Father, uh, I mean, you know, from the very beginning, Christ was to be the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Before, I guess, before the earth was even created uh, and before Adam was even put in the garden, Christ was scheduled to die for us. A I, I, Father knew we, were, we would sin and fall. He knew. He made provision of it before the foundation of the world. Verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. The Bible is a book to, for, and about Christ and his redemption of his children. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, obviously, Jesse is not a tree, but, well, a family tree. Now, who is Jesse? Ah, simple. Who is Jesse? Well, 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 12 will tell you. Now David, who who's David? Oh yeah, yeah, that that uh, shepherd boy that confronted Goliath, who became king of Israel, that David. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah. Who was born in Bethlehem? Jesus was, wasn't he? And Bethlehem was part of Judah. David was of the tribe of Judah. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. So David was of Bethlehem, Judah, and his father's name was Jesse. Let's go back to Isaiah 11. And there shall come forth a rod out of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, who is Christ in the flesh related to? David, King David. Verse 2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 3. We're going to read the whole chapter. In those days, I, I you know, I know in this series I've been reading a lot of the same stuff, but, you know, that's the thing. If you missed one study or you don't remember because it was, you know, a week or two ago, this will help refresh your memory. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah people. That's the Greek rendering of Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment, his clothing, of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Boy, if I had to go uh, get baptized in Jordan confessing my sins, I'd be there for years. Verse 7. But when he, John the Baptist, 
But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, Ooh, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Wow. Now, what is a Pharisee and a Sadducee? Well, in John 3, 1, we read, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 7. Uh, that's why you got to use the King James Bible, because the King James Bible interprets the King James Bible. Mark chapter 7, verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. Now, who hangs out at Jerusalem? Duh. And when they had saw some of the disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, for the Pharisees and all the Jews, I mean, that tells you right there, Pharisees are Jews. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, often, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders, which is what the, uh, the Talmud is, right? All right, so let's go back to Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. But when he, John the Baptist, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Also now, also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, his, purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. That means allowed. And Jesus, when he was baptized, now here's, here's why I, I went to this chapter. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. The Spirit of God, okay? Verse 17, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. 
Oh yeah, let's let's go to Revelation and take a look at this. Okay, Revelation 2 and 27. And he, Christ, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father. And you can look up in Psalms 2, 9. It says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Revelation 12, 5. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Revelation 19.15 And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That's the word of God, right? That, it sh uh, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. In Hebrews 4.12, we read, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You see, your soul and spirit are not the same. Man is a three-part creature. Man has a soul, a spirit, and a body. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And that's scary. All right, in uh, Revelation 19.11, we read, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Back to Isaiah 11. Uh, 11 verse 4 but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reign reigns all right now there's a group of people called preterists that think that uh Everything in the Bible is past. Everything in Revelation is all past. Happened in the past. It's all past. Christ is here ruling and reigning. Uh, but check this out. Verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the cow and the calf with and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Now, I don't know about you, but if lions have been eating straw like an ox, if they've been eating, uh, if they're not meat eaters, well, you know, I haven't seen it. You know, all those specials on TV, maybe uh, whoever owns the TV has been uh, putting out those uh, lions being meat eaters. And they're trying to hide this from us. I, but I don't know. Have you seen a wolf, a wolf slaying with a lamb and uh, a calf and a young lion lying down together? Well, if the calf is lying down with the lion, the lion's got its mouth around the calf's throat. But, you know, I have never seen a lion eating straw like an ox or a cow. So I say this is future. This right here is when Christ returns and things change. Verse 8, And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. What's an asp? It's a special type of very dangerous, venomous snake. Uh, some people say that an asp is the uh, a type of cobra. I don't know. All right, so, like I say, 
I haven't seen any lions eating straw. And uh, verse 8, And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the cockatrice den, another type of snake. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All right, so until we start seeing lions eating straw and children playing around poisonous snakes and not being hurt, and I'm not talking about these crazy Pentecostals that play with snakes. Every once in a while, you hear about one, and they get bit, and they die. Uh, yeah, I had experiences with them when I, uh, I think it was in middle school. Yeah, mom, my sister, and I went to a Pentecostal church, and we went in there to worship God, and we saw them playing with snakes with triangular heads. And we, uh, you know, I think we all looked at each other and I said, I think we're in the wrong place. And that was the last time that I remember we ever went to a building that called itself a church. So, all right, verse 10. So I think this is future. Lions eating straw, children playing with snakes, around snakes and not getting hurt. Okay. Now, the point is, if this is future, and we're going to read in the Bible where Jesus says that in the resurrection, uh, there's believers are not given in marriage, but are as the angels in heaven. We're going to cover that later. So if there's no marriage in heaven, and this is the future, this is the kingdom, and lions are eating straw, and children are playing around snakes' holes and not being hurt, this has got to be the future. This has got to be the kingdom. This has got to be after Christ returns to earth. Well, if and, but so if this is when Christ returns to earth and lions are eating straw and children are there playing around snakes holes and believers don't are not given in marriage, then where do these children come from? Well, good question. Glad you asked. All right. We'll cover that in a little bit. I want to finish up this chapter. Verse 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time, to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. Now remember, uh, northern Israel was taken into captivity by the Assyrians. Which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Parthros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. The islands of the sea. Well, what island of the sea gave us the King James Bible, uh, depending upon who you ask, Britain, the United Kingdom, or England. Verse 12. Oh, and the islands of the sea. We can't forget Greece. Greece were the islands of the sea. And guess what? The New Testament was written in Greek. So God's going to gather his people from the islands of the sea. Verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign to the, for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Ephraim was one of the main tribes of northern Israel. Verse 14, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines. Uh, Goliath was one of the Philistines. He was a giant. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom. Edom is Esau. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab. And the children of Ammon shall obey them. 
And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. All right, so if the end part of Isaiah 11, where there's children playing around snakes holes and lions are eating straw, um, if I think that's the kingdom of Christ when he returns, where do these children come from? All right, so uh, Matthew 22, 23. We've read this yesterday, but we're going to read it again. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him. Now the Sadducees were the priests in the temple. They were the ones that were doing animal sacrifice, and they only accepted the first five books of the Bible. Their temple rituals were based on the book of Leviticus. So they believed in uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They accepted nothing else in the Bible. They didn't accept the Psalms. They didn't accept Isaiah. They didn't accept any of the minor prophets. They didn't accept the book of Job. They didn't accept Jonah. None of those books. Just the first five books of Moses. So, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, Christ, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed, or children, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, no children, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection which they don't believe in. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err. That's where we get the word error. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. And remember, people, not all the angels of God are in heaven. Some of them were cast to the earth, right? But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. All right, so, there's... Lions eating straw, children, I mean sucklings, that means children that are, you know, being breastfed, and they're playing on the ground next to a serpent, an asp's hole. You know, they're playing around snakes, and they're not being hurt. All right, and, and in the resurrection, there's no marriage. Where do these children come from? Well, my best guess is that... Uh, children that died in childbirth and the abortion mills of which there's going to be uh, there's an estimation that approximately 60, 70 million children in the United States alone have been aborted. So, guess what? Oh, shouldn't these children be given a chance to be born or, I don't know, born, but uh, be given a chance to come into being in their flesh body and be given a chance to grow up and be given a chance to accept the Lord or, or reject Him? I think so. All right, I think I'm going to close this out. Uh, next, if you want to read ahead... Uh, you can go to Zechariah, Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H, chapter 14. 
And uh, that's where we're going to go next. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.